On the Origin of the World, translated by Hans Gebhard Biedke and Bentley Layton. Seeing that everybody, gods of the world and mankind, says that nothing existed prior to chaos, I, in distinction to them, shall demonstrate that they are all mistaken because they are not acquainted with the origin of chaos, nor with its root. Here is the demonstration. How well it suits all men on the subject of chaos to say that it is a kind of darkness, but in fact it comes from a shadow, which has been called by the name darkness. And the shadow comes from a product that has existed since the beginning. It is, moreover, clear that it, it existed before chaos came into being, and that the latter is posterior to the product first. Let us therefore concern ourselves with the facts of the matter, and furthermore, with the first product, from which chaos was projected. And in this way, the truth will be clearly demonstrated. After the natural structure of the immortal beings had completely developed out of the infinite, a likeness then emanated from pistis, faith. It is called Sophia, wisdom. It exercised violation and became a product resembling the primeval light. And immediately her will manifested itself as a likeness of heaven, having an unimaginable magnitude. It was between the immortal beings and those things that came into being after them, like missing text. She, Sophia, functioned as a veil dividing mankind from the things above. Now the eternal realm, aeon of truth, has no shadow outside of it, for the limitless light is everywhere within it. But it, its exterior is shadow, which has been called by the name darkness. From it, there appeared a force presiding over the darkness. And the forces that came into being subsequent to them called the shadow, the limitless chaos. From it, every kind of diversity sprouted up, missing text, together with the entire place, so that also shadow is posterior to the first product. It was in the abyss that it, shadow, appeared, deriving from the aforementioned pistis. Then shadow perceived there was something mightier than it and felt envy. And when it had become pregnant of its own accord, suddenly it engendered jealousy. Since that day, the principle of jealousy amongst all the realms and their worlds has been apparent. Now as for that jealousy, it was found to be an abortion without any spirit in it. Like a shadow, it came into existence in a vast watery substance. Then the bile that had come into being out of the shadow was thrown into part of chaos. Since that day, a watery substance has been apparent, and what sank within it flowed away, being visible in chaos. As with a woman giving birth to a child, all her superfluities flow out, just so. Matter came into being out of shadow and was projected apart, and it did not depart from chaos. Rather, matter was in chaos, being in a part of it. And when these things had come to pass, then Pistis came and appeared over the matter of chaos, which had been expelled like an aborted fetus, since there was no spirit in it. For all of it, chaos was limitless darkness and bottomless water. Now when Pistis saw what had resulted from her defect, she became disturbed, and the disturbance appeared as a fearful product. It rushed to her in all the chaos. She turned to it and blew into its face in the abyss, which is below all of the heavens. And when Pistis Sophia desired to cause the thing that had no spirit to be formed into a likeness and to rule over matter and over all her forces, there appeared for the first time a ruler out of the waters, lion-like in appearance, androgynous, having great authority within him and ignorant of whence he had came into being. Now when Pistis Sophia saw him moving about in the depths of the waters, she said to him, Child, pass through here, whose equivalent is Yaldabea. Since that day, there appeared the principle of verbal expression, which reached the gods and the angels and mankind. And what came into being as a result of verbal expression, the gods and the angels and mankind finished. Now, as for the ruler Yaldabea, he is ignorant of the force of Pistis. He did not see her face. Rather, he saw in the water the likeness that spoke with him. And because of that voice, he called himself Yaltabea. But Ariel is what the perfect call him, for he was like a lion. Now when he had come to have authority over matter, Pistis Sophia withdrew up to her light. When the ruler saw his magnitude, 
It was only himself that he saw. He saw nothing else except for water and darkness. Then he supposed that it was he alone who existed. His, missing text, was completed by verbal expression. It appeared as a spirit moving to and fro upon the waters. And when that spirit appeared, the ruler set apart the watery substance. And what was dry was divided into another place. And from matter, he made for himself an abode, and he called it heaven. And from matter, the ruler made a footstool, and he called it earth. Next, the ruler had a thought consistent with his nature, and by means of verbal expression, he created an androgyny. He opened his mouth and cooed to him. When his eyes had been opened, he looked at his father, and he said to him, Ee! Then his father called him Yao. Next, he created the second son. He cooed to him, and he opened his eyes and said to his father, Eh! His father called him Eloe. Next, he created the third son. He cooed to him, and he opened his eyes and said to his father, As! His father called him Astypheos. These are the three sons of the father. Seven appeared in chaos, androgynous. They have their masculine names and their feminine names. The feminine name is Pronoia, forethought, Sambathus, which is weak. And his son is called Yao. His feminine name is Lordship, Sabbath. His feminine name is Deity, Adanos. His feminine name is Kingship, Eleos. His feminine name is Jealousy, Oreos. His feminine name is Wealth, and Astypheos. His feminine name is Sophia, Wisdom. These are the seven forces of the seven heavens of chaos, and they were born androgynous, consistent with the immortal pattern that existed before them, according to the wish of Pistis, so that the likeness of which had existed since the beginning might reign to the end. You will find the effect of these names and the force of the male entities in the Archangelic Book of the Prophet Moses, and the names of the female entities in the first book of Nerea. Now the prime parent, Yaldabaoth, since he possessed great authorities, created heavens for each of his offspring through verbal expression, created them beautiful as dwelling places, and in each heaven he created great glories seven times excellent, thrones and mansions and temples, and also chariots and virgin spirits sent up to an invisible one in their glories, each one has these in his heaven. Mighty armies of gods and lords and angels and archangels, countless myriads so that they might serve. The account of these matters you will find in a precise manner of the first account of Oriah. And they were completed from this heaven to as far up as the sixth heaven, namely that of Sophia. The heaven and his earth were destroyed by the troublemaker that was below them all. And the six heavens shook violently for the forces of chaos knew who it was that had destroyed the heaven that was below them. And when Pistis knew about the breakage resulting from the disturbance, she sent forth her breath and bound him and cast him into the Tartaros. Since that day, the heaven, along with its earth, has consolidated itself through Sophia, the daughter of Yalthabaoth, she who is below them all. Now when the heavens had consolidated themselves along with the forces and all of their administration, the prime parent became insolent, and he was honored by the army of angels, and all the gods and their angels gave blessing and honor to him. And for his part, he was delighted and continually boasted, saying to them, I have no need of anyone. He said, It is I who am God, and there is no other one that exists apart from me. And when he said this, he sinned against all the immortal beings who give answer, and they laid it to his charge. Then, when Pistis saw the impiety of the chief ruler, she was filled with anger. She was invisible. She said, You are mistaken, Samael, that is, blind God. There is an immortal man of light who has been in existence before you, and who will appear among your mottled forms. He will trample you to scorn, just as potter's clay is pounded. And you will descend to your mother, the abyss, along with those that belong to you. For at the consummation of your works, the entire defect that has become visible out of the truth will be abolished, and it will cease to be, and will be like what has never been. Saying this, Pistis revealed her likeness of her greatness in the waters, and in doing, she withdrew up to her light.
Now when Sabath, the son of Yaltabaoth, heard the voice of Pistis, he sang praises to her, and he condemned the father, missing text, at the word of Pistis, and he praised her because she had instructed them about the immortal man in his light. Then Pistis Sophia stretched out her finger and poured upon him some light from her light to be a condemnation of his father. Then, when Sabath was illuminated, he received great authority against all forces of chaos. Since that day, he has been called Lord of the Forces. He hated his father, the darkness, and his mother, the abyss, and loathed his sister, the thought of the prime parent which moved to and fro upon the waters. And because of his light, all the authorities of chaos were jealous of him. And when they had become disturbed, they made a great war in the seven heavens. Then when Pista Sophia had seen the war, she dispatched seven archangels to Sabath from her light. They snatched him up to the seventh heaven. They stood before him as attendants. Furthermore, she sent him three more archangels and established the kingdom for him over everyone so that he might dwell above the twelve gods of chaos. Now when Sabath had taken up the place of repose in return for his repentance, Pistis also gave him her daughter Zoe, life, together with great authority, so that she might instruct him about all the things that exist in the eighth heaven. And as he had authority, he made himself first of all a mansion. It is huge, magnificent, seven times as great as all of those that exist in the seven heavens. And before his mansion, he created a throne, which was huge, and was upon a four-faced chariot called Cherubin. Now the Cherubin has eight shapes per each of the four corners, lion forms and calf forms and human forms and eagle forms, so that all the forms amount to 64 forms and seven archangels that stand before it. He is the eighth and has authority. All the forms amount to 72. Furthermore, from this chariot, the 72 gods took shape. They took shape so that they might rule over the 72 languages of the people. And by that throne he created other serpent-like angels called seraphim, which praise him at all times. Thereafter he created a congregation of angels, thousands and myriads, numberless, which resemble the congregation in the eighth heaven, and a firstborn called Israel, which is the man that sees God, and another being called Jesus Christ, who resembles the Savior above in the eighth heaven, and who sits at his right upon a revered throne. And at his left, there sits the Virgin of the Holy Spirit, upon a throne and glorifying him. And the seven virgins stand before her, text missing, possessing thirty harps and psalteries and trumpets glorifying him. And all the armies of the angels glorify him, and they bless him. Now where he sits is upon a throne of light, within a great cloud that covers him. And there was no one with him in the cloud except Sophia, instructing him about all the things that exist in the eighth heaven, so that the likeness of those things might be created, in order that his reign might endure until the consummation of the heavens of chaos and their forces. Now Pistis Sophia set him apart from the darkness, and summoned him to her right, and the prime parent she put at her left. Since that day, right has been called justice, and left called wickedness. Now because of this, they all received a realm in the congregation of justice and wickedness. Text missing. Stand. Text missing. Upon a creature. Text missing. All. Thus, when the prime parent of chaos saw his son, Sabath, and the glory that he was in, and perceived that he was the greatest of all authorities of chaos, he envied him. And having become wrathful, he engendered death out of his death and he was established over the sixth heaven, for Sabath had been snatched up from there, and thus the number of the six authorities of chaos was achieved. Then death, being androgynous, mingled with his own nature and begot seven androgynous offspring. These are the names of the male ones, jealousy, wrath, tears, sighing, suffering, lamentation, bitter weeping, and these are the names of the female ones, wrath, pain, lust, sighing, curse, bitterness, quarrelsomeness. They had intercourse with one another, and each one begot seven, so that they amount to forty-nine androgynous demons. 
their names and their effects you will find in the Book of Solomon. And in the presence of those, Zoe, who is with Sabah, created seven good androgynous forces. These are the names of the male one, the unenvious, the blessed, the joyful, the true, the unbegrudging, the beloved, the trustworthy. Also, as regard to the female ones, these are their names, peace, gladness, rejoicing, blessedness, truth, love, faith. And from these there are many good and innocent spirits. Their influence and their effects you will find in the configurations of the fate of heaven that is beneath the twelve. And having seen the likeness of Pistis in the waters, the prime parent grieved very much, especially when he heard her voice, like the voice that has called him out of the waters. And when he knew it was she who had given a name to him, he sighed. He was ashamed on account of his transgression. And when he had come to know in truth that an immortal man of light had been existing before him, he was greatly disturbed. For he had previously said to all the gods and their angels, It is I who am God. No other one exists apart from me. For he had been afraid that they might know that another had been in existence before him and might condemn him. But he, being devoid of understanding, scoffed at the condemnation and acted recklessly. He said, If anything has existed before me, let it appear so that we may see its light. And immediately, behold, light came out of the eighth heaven above and passed through all of the heavens of earth. And when the prime parent saw that the light was beautiful as it radiated, he was amazed, and he was greatly ashamed. As that light appeared, a human likeness appeared within it, very wonderful. And no one saw it except for the prime parent and Pranoya, who was with him. Yet its light appeared to all the forces of heavens. Because of this, they were all troubled by it. Then when Pranoya saw that emissary, she became enamored of him. But he hated her because she was on the darkness. But she desired to embrace him, and she was not able to. When she was unable to assuage her love, she poured out her light upon the earth. Since that day, that emissary has been called Adam of Light, whose rendering is the luminous man of blood, and the earth spread over him, holy Adam man, whose rendering is the holy land of Adamantine. Since that day, all the authorities have honored the blood of the Virgin, and the earth was purified on account of the blood of the Virgin. But most of all, the water was purified through the likeness of Pista Sophia, who had appeared to the prime parent in the waters. Justly, then, it has been said through the waters, the holy water, since it vivifies the all, purifies it. Out of that first blood, Eros appeared, being androgynous. His masculinity is Hymerius, being fire from the light. His femininity that is with him, a soul of blood, is from the stuff of Pranoya. He is very lovely in his beauty, having a charm beyond all the creatures of chaos. Then all the gods and their angels, when they behold Eros, become enamored of him. And appearing in all of them, he set them afire, just as from a single lamp many lamps are lit, and one in the same light is there, but the lamp is not diminished. And in this way, Eros became dispersed in all of the created beings of chaos and was not diminished. Just as from the midpoint of light and darkness Eros appeared, and at that midpoint of the angels and mankind the sexual union of Eros was consummated, so out of the earth the primal pleasure blossomed. The woman followed earth, and marriage followed the woman. Birth followed marriage, disillusion followed birth. After that Eros, the grapevine sprouted up out of that blood which had been shed over the earth. Because of this, those who drink of it conceive the desire of sexual union. After the grapevine, a fig tree and a pomegranate tree sprouted up from the earth, together with the rest of the trees, all species, having with them their seed from the seed of the authorities and their angels. Then justice created paradise, being beautiful and being outside the orbit of the moon and the orbit of the sun in the land of wantonness, in the east in the midst of the stones. And desire is in the midst of the beautiful appetizing trees. And the tree of eternal life is as it appeared by God's will to the north of paradise, so that it might make eternal the souls of the pure, who shall come forth from the mottled forms of poverty at the consummation of the age. 
Now the color of the tree of life is like the sun, and its branches are beautiful. Its leaves are like those of the cypress. Its fruit is like a bunch of grapes when it is white. Its height goes as far as heaven. And next to it is the tree of knowledge, gnosis, having the strength of God. Its glory is like the moon when fully radiant, and its branches are beautiful. Its leaves are like fig leaves. Its fruit is like a good appetizing date. And this tree is to the north of paradise, so that it may arouse the souls from the torpor of the demons, in order that they might approach the tree of life and eat its fruit, and so condemn the authorities and their angels. The effect of this tree is described in the sacred book, to wit, It is you who are the tree of knowledge, which is in paradise, from which the first man ate, and which opened his mind, and he loved his female counterpart and condemned the other, alien likenesses and loathed them. Now after it, the olive tree sprouted up, which was to purify the kings and the high priests of righteousness, who were to appear in the last days, since the olive tree appeared out of the light of the first Adam for the sake of the unguent that they were to receive. And the first soul, Psyche, loved Eros, who was with her, and poured her blood upon him and upon the earth. And out of that blood the rose first sprouted up, up out of the earth, out of the thorn bush, to be a source of joy for the light that was to appear in the bush. Moreover, after this beautiful, good-smelling flowers sprouted up from the earth, different kinds, from every single virgin of the daughters of Pernoia, and they, when they had become enamored of Eros, poured out their blood upon him and upon the earth. After these, every plant sprouted up from the earth, different kinds, containing the seed of the authorities and their angels. After these, the authorities created out of the waters all species of beast and the reptiles and the birds, different kinds, containing the seeds of authorities and their angels. But before all these, when he had appeared on the first, the first day, he remained upon the earth, something like two days, and left the lower pernoia in heaven and ascended towards his light. And immediately darkness covered all the universe. Now when she wished, the Sophia, who was in her lower heaven, received authority from Pistis, and fashioned great luminous bodies in all the stars. And she put them in the sky to shine upon the earth, and to render temporal signs and seasons and years and months and days and nights and moments and so forth. And in this way the entire region upon the sky was adorned. Now when Adam of light conceived the wish to enter his light, the eighth heaven, he was unable to do so because of the poverty that had mingled with his light. Then he created for himself a vast eternal realm. And within that eternal realm, he created six eternal realms and their adornments, six in number, that were seven times better than the heavens of chaos and their adornments. Now all these eternal realms and their adornments exist within the infinity that is between the eighth heaven and the chaos below it, being counted with the universe that belongs to poverty. If you want to know the arrangements of these, you will find it written in the seventh universe of the prophet of higher alias. And before Adam of light had withdrawn into the chaos, the authorities saw him and laughed at the prime parent because he had lied when he said, It is I who am God. No one exists before me. When they came to him, they said, Is this not the God who ruined our work? He answered and said, Yes. If you do not want him to be able to ruin our work, Come, let us create a man out of earth, according to the image of our body, and according to the likeness of this being, to serve us, so that when he sees his likeness, he might become enamored of it. No longer will he ruin our work. Rather, we shall make those who are born out of the light our servants for all the duration of this eternal realm. Now all of this came to pass according to the forethought of Pistis, in order that man should appear after his likeness, and should condemn them because of their mottled form, and their mottled form became an enclosure of the light. Then the authorities received the knowledge, gnosis, necessary to create man. Sophia Zoe, she who is with Sabath, had anticipated them, and she laughed at their decision, for they are blind. Against their own interest they ignorantly created him, and they did not realize what they were about to do. The reason she anticipated them and made her own man first was in order that he might instruct their modeled form how to despise them, and thus to escape from them. 
Now the production of the instructor came about as follows. When Sophia let fall a droplet of light, it flowed onto the water, and immediately a human being appeared, being androgynous. That droplet she modeled first as a female body. Afterwards, using the body, she modeled it in the likeness of the mother, which had appeared. And he finished it in twelve months. An androgynous human being was produced, whom the Greeks call Hermaphrodites, and whose mother the Hebrews call Eve of Life, Zoe, namely the female instructor of life. Her offspring is the creature that is Lord. Afterwards, the authorities called it beast, so that it might lead astray their modeled creatures. The interpretation of the beast is the instructor, for it was found to be the wisest of all beings. Now Eve is the first virgin, the one who without a husband bore her first offspring. It is she who served as her own midwife. For this reason, she is held to have said, It is I who am the part of the, my mother, and it is I who am the mother. It is I who am the wife, it is I who am the virgin. It is I who am pregnant, it is I who am the midwife. It is I who am the one that comforts pain of travail. It is my husband who bore me, and it is I who am his mother. And it is he who is my father and my lord, and it is he who is my force. What he desires, he says with reason. I am in the process of becoming, yet I have borne a man as lord. Now these things through the will, the souls that were going to enter the modeled forms of the authorities were manifested through Sabbath and his Christ. And regarding these, the holy voice said, Multiply and improve, be Lord over all creatures. And it is they who were taken captive, according to their destinies, by the prime parent. And thus, they were shut into the prisons of the modeled forms until the consummation of the age. And at that time, the prime parent then rendered an opinion concerning man to those who were with him. Then each of them cast his sperm into the midst of the navel of the earth. Since that day, the seven rulers have fashioned man with his body resembling their body, but his likeness resembling the man that had appeared to them. His modeling took place by parts, one at a time and their leader fashioned the brain and the nervous system. Afterwards, he appeared as prior to him. He became a soul-endowed man, and he was called Adam, that is, father, according to the name of the one that existed before him. And when they had finished Adam, he abandoned him as an inanimate vessel, since he had taken form like an abortion, in that no spirit was in him. Regarding this thing, when the chief ruler remembered the saying of Pistis, he was afraid lest the true man enter his model form and become its lord. For this reason, he left his modeled form forty days without soul, and he withdrew and abandoned it. Now on the fortieth day, Sophia Zoe sent her breath into Adam, who had no soul. He began to move upon the ground, and he could not stand up. Then, when the seven rulers came, they saw him and they were greatly disturbed. They went to him and seized him. And he, the chief ruler, said to the breath within him, Who are you, and whence did you come hither? It answered and said, I have come from the force of the man for the destruction of your work. When they heard, they glorified him, since they gave him respite from the fear and the anxiety in which they found themselves. Then they called that day rest, inasmuch they had rested from toil. And when they saw that Adam could stand up, they were glad. And they took him and put him in paradise, and they withdrew up to their heavens. After the day of rest, Sophia sent her daughter Zoe, being called Eve, as an instructor, in order that she might make Adam, who had no soul, arise, so that those whom he should engender might become containers of light. When Eve saw her male counterpart prostrate, she had pity upon him, and she said, Adam, become alive, arise upon the earth. Immediately her word became accomplished fact. For Adam, having arisen, suddenly opened his eyes. When he saw her, he said, You shall be called mother of the living, for it is you who has given me life. Then the authorities were informed that their modeled form was alive and had arisen, and they were greatly troubled. They sent seven archangels to see what had happened. They came to Adam. When they saw Eve talking to him, they said to one another, 
What sort of thing is this luminous woman? For she resembles that likeness which appeared to us in the light. Now come, let us lay hold of her and cast her seed into her, so that when she becomes soiled, she may not be able to ascend into her light. Rather, those whom she bears will be under our charge. But let us not tell Adam, for he is not one of us. Rather, let us bring a deep sleep over him, and let us instruct him in his sleep to the effect that she came from his rib, in order that his wife might obey, and he may be lord over her. Then Eve, being a force, laughed at their decision. She put mist into their eyes, and secretly left her likeness with Adam. She entered the tree of knowledge and remained there. First she was pregnant with Abel, by the first ruler, and it was by the seven authorities and their angels that she bore the other offspring. And all of this came to pass according to the forethought of the prime parent, so that the first mother might bear within her every seed, being mixed and being fitted to the fate of the universe and its configurations, and to justice. A prearranged plan came into effect regarding Eve, so that the modeled forms of the authorities might become enclosures of the light, whereupon it would condemn them through their modeled forms. Now the first Adam, Adam of light, is spirit endowed, and appeared on the first day. The second Adam is soul endowed, and appeared on the sixth day, which is called Aphrodite. The third Adam is a creature of the earth, that is, the man of the law, and he appeared on the eighth day. Text missing. The tranquility of poverty, which is called the day of the sun, Sunday, and the progeny of the earthly Adam became numerous and was completed, and produced within itself every kind of scientific information of the soul-endowed Adam, but all were in ignorance. Next, let me say that once the rulers had seen him and the female creature who was with him erring ignorantly like beasts, they were very glad. When they learned that the immortal man was not going to neglect them, rather that they would even have to fear the female creature that had returned to a tree, they were disturbed and said, Perhaps this is the true man, this being who has brought a fog upon us and has taught us that she who was soiled is like him, and so we shall be conquered. Then the seven of them together laid plans. They came up to Adam and Eve timidly. They said to him, The fruit of all the trees created for you in paradise shall be eaten. But as for the tree of knowledge, control yourselves and do not eat from it. If you eat, you will die. Having imparted great fear to them, they withdrew up to their authorities. Then came the wisest of all creatures, who was called Beast. And when he saw the likeness of their mother Eve, he said to her, What did God say to you? Was it, Do not eat from the tree of knowledge? She said, He said not only, Do not eat from it, but do not touch it, lest you die. He said to her, Do not be afraid. In death you shall not die, for he knows that when you eat from it, your intellect will become sober, and you will come to be like gods, recognizing the difference that obtains between evil men and good ones. Indeed, it was in jealousy that he said this to you, so that you would not eat from it. Now Eve had confidence in the words of the instructor. She gazed at the tree and saw that it was beautiful and appetizing, and she liked it. She took some of its fruit and ate it, and she also gave some to her husband, and he ate it too. Then their intellect became open. For when they had eaten, the light of knowledge had shone upon them. When they clothed themselves with shame, they knew that they were naked of knowledge. When they became sober, they saw that they were naked and become enamored of each other. When they saw that the ones who had modeled them had the form of beast, they loathed them. They were very aware. Then when the rulers knew that they had broken their commandments, they entered paradise and came to Adam and Eve with earthquake and great threatening to see the effects of the aid. Then Adam and Eve trembled greatly and hid under the trees in paradise. Then the rulers did not know where they were and said, Adam, where are you? He said, I am here, for through fear of you I hid, being ashamed. And they said to him ignorantly, Who told you about the shame with which you clothed yourself, unless you have eaten from that? He said, The woman whom you gave me, it is she that gave to me, and I ate. Then they said to the latter, What is this that you have done? She answered and said, It is the instructor who urged me on, and I ate. Then the rulers came up to the instructor, 
Their eyes became misty because of him, and they could not do anything to him. They cursed him, since they were powerless. Afterwards, they came up to the woman and cursed her and her offspring. After the woman, they cursed Adam and the land because of him, and the crops, and all things they had created they cursed. They have no blessing. Good cannot result from evil. From that day, the authorities knew that there truly was something mightier than they. They recognized only that their commandments had not been kept. Great jealousy was brought into the world solely because of the immortal man. Now, when the rulers saw that their Adam had entered into an alien state of knowledge, they desired to test him, and they gathered together all the domestic animals and the wild beasts of the earth and the birds of heaven and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. When he saw them, he gave names to their creatures. They became troubled because Adam had recovered from all the trials. They assembled and laid plans, and they said, Behold, Adam, he has come to be like one of us, so that he knows the difference between the light and the darkness. Now perhaps he will be deceived, as in the case of the tree of knowledge, and also will come to the tree of life and eat from it, and become immortal, and become Lord, and despise us, and disdain us, and all of our glory. Then he will denounce us along with our universe. Come, let us expel him from paradise, down to the land from which he was taken, so that henceforth he might not be able to recognize anything better than we can. And so they expelled Adam from paradise, along with his wife. And this deed that they had done was not enough for them. Rather, they were afraid. They went into the tree of life and surrounded it with great fearful things, fiery living creatures called cherubim, and they put a flaming sword in their midst, fearfully twirling at all times, so that no earthly being might ever enter that place. Thereupon, since the rulers were envious of Adam, they wanted to diminish Adam and Eve's lifespans. They could not, however, because of fate, which had been fixed since the beginning, for to each had been allotted a lifespan of a thousand years, according to the course of the luminous bodies. But although the rulers could not do this, each of the evil doers took away ten years, and all this lifespan which remained amounted to 930 years, and these are in pain and weakness and evil destruction. And so life has turned out to be from that day until the consummation of the age. Thus, when Sophia Zoe saw that the rulers of the darkness had laid a curse upon her counterparts, she was indignant. And coming out of the first heaven with full power, she chased those rulers out of their heavens and cast them down into the sinful world so that there they should dwell in the form of evil spirits upon the earth. Missing text. So that in their world it might pass the thousand years in paradise, a soul-endowed living creature called Phoenix. It kills itself and brings itself to life as a witness to the judgment against them, for the wrong they did to Adam and his generation, unto the consummation of the age. There are, text missing, three men, and also his posterities unto the consummation of the world, the spirit endowed of eternity and the soul endowed and the earthly. Likewise, the three phoenixes in paradise, the first is immortal, the second lives a thousand years, as for the third, it is written in the sacred book that it is consumed. So too, there are three baptisms. The first is the spiritual, the second is by fire, the third is by water. Just as the phoenix appears as a witness concerning the angels, so the case of the water hydra in Egypt, which has been a witness to those going down into the baptism of true man. The two bulls in Egypt possess a mystery, the sun and the moon being a witness to Sabbath, namely that over them Sophia received the universe. From the day that she made the sun and the moon, she put a seal upon her heavens unto eternity. And the worm that has been born out of the phoenix is a human being as well. It is written concerning it, the just man will blossom like a phoenix. And the phoenix first appears in a living state and dies and rises again, being a sign of what has become apparent at the consummation of age. It was only in Egypt that these great signs appeared nowhere else as an indication that it is like God's paradise. Let us return to the aforementioned rulers so that we may offer some explanation of them. 
Now, when the seven rulers were cast down from the heavens onto the earth, they made for themselves angels, numerous, demonic, to serve them. And the latter instructed mankind in many kinds of error and magic, potions and worship of idols, spilling of blood, of altars and temples and sacrifices and libations to all the spirits of the earth, having their co-worker fate, who came into existence by the concord between the gods of injustice and justice. And thus, when the world had come into being, it distractedly erred at all times. For all men upon the earth worshipped the spirit demon from the creation of consummation, both the angels of righteousness and the men of unrighteousness. Thus did the world come to exist in distraction, in ignorance, and in a stupor. They all erred until the appearance of the true man. Let this suffice so far as the matter goes. Now we shall proceed to consideration of our world so that we may accurately finish the description of its structure and management. Then it will become obvious how belief in the unseen realm, which has been apparent from creation down to the consummation of the age, was discovered. I come, therefore, to the main points regarding the immortal man. I shall speak of all the beings that belong to him, explaining how they happen to be here. When a multitude of human beings had come into existence, through the parentage of the Adam who had been fashioned, and out of matter, and when the world had already become full, the rulers were master over it. That is, they kept it restrained by ignorance. For what reason? For the following, since the immortal father knows that a deficiency of truth came into being amongst the eternal realms and their universe, when he wished to bring to naught the rulers of perdition through the creatures they had modeled, he sent your likeness down into the world of perdition, namely, the blessed little innocent spirits. They are not alien to knowledge, for all knowledge is vested in one angel who appeared before them. He is not without the power in the company of the Father, and he gave them knowledge. Whenever they appear in the world of perdition, immediately and first of all, they reveal the pattern of imperishability as a condemnation of the rulers and their forces. Thus, when the blessed beings appeared in forms modeled by authorities, they were envious. And out of the envy, the authorities mixed their seed with them in hopes of polluting them. They could not. Then, when the blessed beings appeared in luminous form, they appeared in various ways. And each one of them, starting out in his land, revealed his knowledge to the visible church constituted of the modeled forms of perdition. The church was found to contain all kinds of seed, because of the seed of the authorities that had mixed with it. Then the Savior created, text missing, of them all, and the spirits of these manifestly superior, being blessed and varying in election, and also he created many other beings, which have no king and are superior to everyone that was before them. Consequently, four races exist. There are three that belong to the king of the eighth heaven, but the fourth race is kingless and perfect, being the highest of them all. For these shall enter the holy place of their father, and they will gain rest and repose and eternal unspeakable glory and unending joy. Moreover, they are the kings within the mortal domain, in that they are immortal. They will condemn the gods of chaos and their forces. Now the word that is superior to all beings was sent for this purpose alone that he might proclaim the unknown. He said, There is nothing hidden that is not apparent, and what has not been recognized will be recognized. And these were sent to make known what is hidden, and the seven authorities of chaos and their impiety, and thus they were condemned to death. So when all the perfect appeared in the forms modeled by the rulers, and when they revealed the incomparable truth, they put to shame all the wisdom of the gods and their fate was found to be a condemnation, and their force dried up, their lordship was dissolved, their forethought became emptiness along with their glory. Before the consummation of the age, the whole place will shake with great thundering, then the rulers will be sad, text missing, their death. The angels will mourn for mankind, and the demons will weep over their seasons, and their mankind will wail and scream at their death. Then the age will begin, and they will be disturbed. 
Their kings will be intoxicated with the fiery sword, and they will wage war against one another, so that the earth is intoxicated with bloodshed. And the seas will be disturbed by those wars. Then the sun will become dark, and the moon will cause its light to cease. The stars of the sky will cancel their circuits, and a great clap of thunder will come out of a great force that is above all the forces of chaos, where the firmament of the woman is situated. Having created the first product, she will put away the wise fire of intelligence and clothe herself with witless wrath. Then she will pursue the gods of chaos, whom she created along with the prime parent. She will cast them down into the abyss. They will be obliterated because of their wickedness. For they will come to be like volcanoes and consume one another until they perish at the hands of the prime parent. When he has destroyed them, he will turn against himself and destroy himself until he ceases to exist. And their heavens will fall one upon the next, and their forces will be consumed by fire. Their eternal realms, too, will be overturned, and his heaven will fall and break in two. His, text missing, will fall down upon the, text missing, support them. They will fall into the abyss, and the abyss will be overturned. The light will, text missing, the darkness and obliterate it. It will be like something that has never been. And the product to which the darkness has been posterior will dissolve. And the deficiency will be plucked out by the root and thrown down into the darkness. And the light will withdraw up to its root. And the glory of the unbegotten will appear. And it will fill all the... When the prophecy and the account of those that are king becomes known and it is fulfilled by those who are called perfect, those who, in contrast, have not become perfect in the unbegotten Father, will receive their glory in the realms in the kingdoms of the immortals, but they will never enter the kingless realm, for everyone must go to the place from which he has come. Indeed, by his acts and his knowledge, each person will make his own nature known.